So I've gotten a few requests from various people they want to see an update video to my first video where I talked about studying eight languages over the summer. Uh, today is September 29th, um, so I figure it's getting cool here in Philadelphia and it's already the fall. So I made some notes for this video, you can check them out here. And uh, yeah, let's get started. I made that uh, video first either about June 8th or June 9th. So I've, you know, I've studied for about 112 days and to give you some numbers, I was able to study for 359 hours total, which comes out to about three hours and 12 minutes a day average of study time. And I'm pretty happy with that. Um, you know, a lot of my friends and a lot of my family tell me I need to slow down with the studying. They say I'm going to burn out. Uh, they say I'm doing too much. I need to focus on other things. But actually, I hope that in the future, I'll be able to study even more than three hours, 12 minutes a day average. Um, my best day over the summer, I was able to stay for seven hours and seven minutes. And that felt pretty good. So if I can keep that up and even increase it, I'll be happy with that. But let's jump into it. So Spanish. This summer I read, I finished Sobre Héroes y Tumas by Ernesto Sabato, which is this book. And I'm reading this again in the Spanish literature class at the Academy. I went on to read El Tunnel by Ernesto Sabato as well. And now I'm reading Los Llanos. I think that's by Federico Falco. And that was a recommendation by someone in the academy. So moving on to German, I finished Homo Faber by Max Frisch. And now I've begun reading Die Unliche Geschichte, which is uh, a great book. Uh, I still don't have an italki conversation partner, but that's something I have to look into so that I can get better at speaking German. And then maybe I can participate in a German literature class at the academy. Although they're coming with, out with some new classes, I think this next quarter, I might find myself occupied by that. We'll see. So let's see. After that, we have Japanese. And of course, I'm studying Sanmegaku. Uh, this is one of the books that I'm, I read. Um, I've also moved on to looking at YouTube videos for Sanmegaku. There's a lot of YouTube creators coming out with content every week about Sanmegaku and uh, yeah, that's pretty interesting. I think I do need to move on to some of the more formal books and courses. However, they're so expensive. It's like two or three hundred dollars per book or per part of the course. And sometimes they're like eight to ten parts of the course. So it gets pretty expensive, but um, hey, maybe Maybe that's what I have to do to take my Sanmegaku to the next level. For Mandarin Chinese, um, I've been reading a light novel. And I'm trying to remember what the title was. I think it's Wu Jia Niang Zi Bu Duin Tim. And uh, yeah, I like light novels just because they're pretty straightforward, not too complicated. They tend to repeat the vocabulary a lot. It's a good way to learn words that way. Also, I remember I went to a Japanese restaurant in Bryn Mawr outside of Philadelphia with my friend Mike. And I asked the waitress if she spoke Mandarin and she said yes. And so we had kind of a back and forth, a conversation as we had the meal. We, um, we were able to speak for like five or 10 minutes and that felt really good to be able to use my Chinese in the real world, not just in my room here, studying from books, but to actually speak with someone. And I also enjoyed the fact that she understood my accent. So that was uh, very motivating that she was able to understand what I was saying. Uh, the other Chinese that I'm studying is Tiu Chu. And over this summer, I was able to speak Tiu Chu with my friends, Miao and Sabrina. I wish I were able to speak with them more often. I'll have to set up more dinners with Sabrina and maybe chat with Miao online a bit more because I'd like to get into the habit of speaking to you more often. I got the italki tutor Camille who lives in France and she's great.
but uh, she's often busy, so I don't always get a lesson every week. Right now, she went back to China to visit, so I haven't had a lesson for two or three weeks. So I'm looking for more opportunities to use Tiuchu, but it's difficult because there aren't resources for Tiuchu like there are for Mandarin Chinese or these other languages like Japanese. I did look on Taobao and I asked my friend Miao to help me out and I was able to find a textbook that was scanned into the computer for Tiuchu. And I've been going through that textbook and I've been mining it for sentences and vocab that I put into Anki that I later study. And that's been going well. I won't go into how difficult it was to get access to these scanned files. The Chinese internet and the services they use for files is just insane. It's so crazy, so difficult to use, especially if you're outside of China. They just don't let you create an account. But anyway, yeah, one of the interesting things that I forgot to mention for Chinese, uh, Mandarin in particular, was I got this book, The Eater's Guide to Chinese Characters, and this is by James McCauley. This was a recommendation by someone in the Language Academy as well. But basically it just goes over how to read menus in Chinese restaurants, like in the US and Chinatowns. And it's really interesting. They have all the uh, they have all the vocabulary, they have sample menus which uh, you can look at to try to figure out what's being said. They have uh, like a dictionary in the back with related vocab for the characters. It's really great. I think this book was made in uh, 19, yeah, 1984. So it's made in the 80s, but uh, still very interesting. You know, the, the characters and the vocab are still the same, so yeah, check this book out if you're curious about Chinese or reading Chinese menus. Now, Korean, still using the French assimil to study Korean. And I've been shadowing this book. I think I'm up to lesson 60 out of 100. And I've been shadowing each lesson, and that's been great. But one of the interesting things that we're going to be doing is that a group of us in the academy decided that we're going to do a study session each week where we try to learn both Japanese and Korean. And we're going to learn both of these languages together because they're pretty similar. They have a lot of shared uh, grammar and a lot of the vocabulary is similar from the uh, Chinese words, the Chinese loan words that were imported into the languages. And so that's great. Um, I was actually tasked with getting the material for us to study. And I went through maybe 10 Japanese books that were used for studying Korean. I couldn't find the kind of book that I wanted to use. So what I did was I actually created the material that we're going to use, at least for the first session that we're going to have, hopefully this weekend. But I used um, AI as well as my own research to create a dialogue, both in Japanese and Korean, as well as introducing the concepts um, gaski des in Japanese and uchonga hyo in Korean, as well as e ikimas and uh, e kamira. Yeah, so those are the concepts that I introduced in the lesson. I'm really happy I was able to create this very uh, nice Japanese Korean. Um, you know, bilingual text. So after that, we have Arabic. And with Arabic, we're still using the 1975 French Asamil for Arabic. When I made the video at the beginning of the summer, we were on lesson 53. Now we're on lesson 79 out of 100. And I think after we finish with this book, we might do the linguaphone for Arabic but I'm not 100% sure on that. We're still going through a Sinbad story that was written for teenagers, and that's very nice to be able to use, you know, real native content. Even if it is written for teenagers, it's still real native content, and that's always exciting to get, uh, you know, real content into you. But so I've been also working on a song. Uh, it's going to be a multilingual rap where I... Uh, speak or rap in six languages 
Uh, the languages I think are Japanese, Chinese, Arabic, Sanskrit, Spanish, and German. So I've worked really hard on the Arabic part. I asked some of my friends in the academy to help me with my pronunciation and I practiced pronouncing Arabic for that song. I still don't think my Arabic pronunciation is that great, but uh, when I release the song, hopefully in a few weeks, you'll get to see what that sounds like. So the last of the eight languages is Sanskrit. We're still using this book, Teach Yourself Complete Sanskrit. And when I made the video at the beginning of the summer, we are on chapter four. Now we're on chapter eight, and there are 15 chapters. It really is a very dense, thick book. It's very comprehensive. Um, you know, I think once you've gone through this book and finished it and gone through all the example sentences, uh, you will have really gotten a deep uh, understanding of Sanskrit. And hopefully, you know, once we finish with this, uh, maybe we'll do another beginner's material and then hopefully we'll get to dive into reading, which I'm really looking forward to. So the last thing that um, I will go over is that there are kind of two bonus languages that I picked up over the summer, and those are French and Italian. Because in the Language Academy, a group of us are getting together every Saturday to uh, study French and Italian. And basically we go over the Berlitz manuals, the Berlitz books, because they have the same storyline in, uh, well, they actually have it in French, Italian, Spanish, and German, but we're just going over the French and Italian ones. And we basically go over a chapter each week and we read it aloud. Then we try to have some basic conversation with each other where we make our own sentences. Actually, this past weekend, um, it was just three of us instead of, I think, five or six of us. And we decided to throw in uh, the Spanish Berlitz as well, just because we had an interest in Spanish. So we did French, Italian, and Spanish. And that was so great to see the languages in comparison. So yeah, um, in the study group, it just began. So we're on chapter three. But uh, I've been studying ahead a little bit in the Berlitz books, and I'm personally on chapter 14. And hopefully I'll get to go through the entire Berlitz uh, course, because I would love to say that um, I was able to complete a Berlitz course. It's one of those courses that's really famous. Even people who are not that into languages have uh, heard of Berlitz sometimes. So I'd like to be able to complete a course and be able to say that I did one. Anyway, uh, that's it. Um, I hope that you were able to study languages this summer. Uh, I intend to keep going. I'm going to keep studying, hopefully more than an average of 3 hours 12 minutes a day. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what the future holds. Uh, this fall is going to be great. Um, yeah, I'll have to let you all know how the studies go. but. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope your studies go well. Me personally, I'm going to end this video now so I can get back to uh, studying today. Okay, thank you.